Sorry, Bob Dave. Oh my god! Ha! Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and you can pre-order all the Keldheim cards you need by heading over to cardkingdom.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Meme or Dream, the series where we take deck lists that Wizards publishes from Magic Arena under the guise that the Liz went 6-0 or better at Platinum or better on Arena and find out if they really could have went 6-0, and maybe they're a dream that just looks kind of janky, or is the deck a meme, and who knows how it managed to go 6-0, if it even did. And this week, we have an interesting standard list. This is a deck I'm calling the most ambitious Dirge Bat ever. So, on one hand, this looks, looks a little bit normal. Like, we got some mutate synergies, although weird numbers of cards, like two auspicious Derexes, that's like the best mutate card. And then we have, like, Meyer Terry Great Horn, Boneyard lurker which people don't usually play some scoot swarps so like a little bit of mutate stuff but then we also have some random landfall stuff lotus cobras brush fire elementals of valith a morag and then the thing that really caught my eye with this list is we're essentially a gruel deck if you look at it yeah we have a garrick which has one black mana symbol we have boneyard lurker which has black in its mana cost but mutates for double green and then we have the double black dirge bat and if you look at our mana base we have four swamps no dual lands our mana Anabase is all basics with Evolving Wild and Fabled Passage, and I guess we're just tutoring out swamps. I mean, uh, the mana dork creatures can help fix our mana, so maybe that's the solution. But really, why are we splashing a double black card in our Gruul deck? I will never understand. So, half mutate, half landfall, no dual lands in the entire deck, weird numbers of anything, and the sideboard. We're getting there. I think the meme or dream community is slowly learning. We've had a lot of no sideboard decks. We've had a couple of like three sideboard card decks. Well, now we are all the way up to nine. We're getting there. That's like 66.7% of the way to a entirely full sideboard. So we're almost there. So an improvement in... I will say the sideboard, most of the cards make sense. Blood Chief Sirs, good sideboard card. Gem Razor, especially with some late mutate synergies, makes sense. Zagoth Mamba, eh, I don't know about this one. But still, I'm not going to complain. Anything in the sideboard is better than not having things in the sideboard. So I'm pretty impressed that we're all the way up to nine cards. This means we're probably like two or three episodes away from actually having a full sideboard on our Meme or Dream deck. So anyway, let's take this deck out through some matches and see. And this week we're looking at two things really is the deck itself a meme or a dream like is it possible this deck is actually getting six wins in a row secondarily is it possible we ever cast a dirge bat like how ambitious is this double black dirge bat in a deck with no actual basic lands and a deck that is very far from black normally when you splash cards they have single mana symbols not double mana symbols so this is an ambitious splash so can we win games can we resolve a dirge bat let's jump into some games and see how it goes all right so <laughs> <laughs> Let's meme or dream it up. Wait, no, no audio. We should have a little audio. Where's, where's our, oh, there we go. Boom. <laughs> a slight bit of arena sound effects. Uh, so, let's, uh, let's find out. Is <laughs> the most ambitious dirge bats of all time. Maybe that's the secret to this deck's success. I guess I should also move her away from the stack. <laughs> moving the camera around on people is so enjoyable uh all right we will play first rub against Luris. immediate mana base issues uh i mean that's the risk of all basics we will mulligan well no mana base issues <laughs> playable card issues perhaps uh we even have a black source dirge bat dirge bat gonna do it um i guess we put a forest to the bottom all right so we're not doing anything for many a turn but if we live for many a turn, oh, it's rogues. Oh dear. Oh, there's <laughs> there's the dirge bat. Um. So yeah, we're not doing anything for a while. But oh boy, rogues is tough. I feel like rogues is is the nightmare for meme or dream decks. I feel like every time we play against rogues with a meme or dream deck, we just end up getting absolutely stomped. <laughs> 
Uh, we've talked about it in past episodes, but rogues is the, the matchup where you really want sideboard cards that specifically target rogues to, like, empty your graveyard, take advantage of your graveyard. Like the Ox of Agonises, Chain Rabba Rackners, things like that. And uh, when you have no sideboard or only part of a sideboard, odds of having those cards is a lot lower. And this one, ugh, already, uh, already looking a little sketchy. We'll see. Uh, well, I guess we play carry added. I mean, if our opponent doesn't have a lot of removal and card draw and we can resolve our stuff, it is it is relatively powerful. That's asking a lot against rogues, which has a ton of counters and removal, but all right. Removal one. Takes down the carry added. Oh, and a thief kill enforcer. Okay. We get milled. We get milled. We get milled. Oh, rogues. Oh, fetch land. It's funny that fetch lands are like the most brutal draw against rogues when they have crabs out. You're just like, oh, come on, just draw a real land. You only got four of these. Come on, where's <laughs> where's just a normal land that is not two landfall triggers? <laughs> oh, Vivian. All right, well, Fabled Passage. Crack Fabled Passage. Well, speaking of ambitious, we are going to ambitiously attempt to resolve a spell against rogues. Vivian, what do you say about that opponent? Uh, answer is no to Vivian. I mean, opponents down to two cards. We're down to half of our, our deck, and our opponent's also killing us with creatures. So, uh, yeah. Probably, in, oh, there goes all of our Sterixes. Opponent. Scryland mills three more cards. Yeah, we're, we're dying in every possible way. We're dying to the beatdowns. We're dying to the mill. You name it, we are dying to it. Opponent mills us and hits us for half of our life total. <laughs> I guess that's a pretty dominating victory for our opponent. They're they're just killing us on multiple levels. <laughs> oh, meme or dream. Um, well, land and sure, Morag. Not that I mean we're just dead. Probably, I guess, maybe a better play is to try to flash in the Dirge Bat and block, but we're, like, in all honesty, we're just straight up dead. All right, so Dirge Bat could try to chump Thieves Guild Enforcer into this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. The Meme Erdreeb Cryptonite. Probably better known as Rogues. Um, so. Ah, <sighs> so, 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 so. What is good against Rogues? I mean, I guess Garrick's Harbinger is not bad. I don't know about these Garrick's Uprisings. How many? That has four power. That does not. That does not. That does. Wait, how many creatures could trigger this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight? That's not a high number. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about these Garrick's Uprisings. With eight creatures with power four great. I mean, I guess it's... I guess it's cute if you can mutate something big on Scoop Swarm, but we're not really built officially to do that. All right, going down the Morag. We're going to keep the ambitious Dirge Bats. I mean, we could have resolved Dirge Bat that game, so I guess that... That uh, happened at least, so... Goal one achieved. Win a game, still a bit away from uh, from the win a game goal. Creature mutates, negative two, negative two. That kills almost nothing against rogues. All right, well. What? I've never seen that message before. <laughs> Oh, it might be because I'm on my new computer. Is that the first time I've sideboarded on the new computer? Well, okay. This is a hand with action. Land go. Awkwardly, we really need black and green. Oh, my God. All right, so. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. 
We need to kill the crab, but if we get black, then... Oh, this is part of the problem with the splash. Like, can we get black? Yes. Can we afford to get black and still cast our gruel cards? Oh, that's so painful. Like, green unlocks our hand, but... Oh, all right, I guess we got to take green. Yeah, I mean, that is that is one of the drawbacks. Oh, my goodness, we draw green anyway. Um, all right. Well, punished, I guess. Carry added, go. I mean, carry added does get us black mana for Blood Chief's Thirst. Unfortunately, our opponent milling means that they can potentially count. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's not black mana. Well, uh, brush fire elemental, go. <laughs> oh, I think we made the correct choice, honestly. Like, it's a bummer that it's not working out, but... We had no way of knowing we were going to draw a greed source. Oh, Dershbat. Well, yeah, I mean... It's what we got. We got cast it. But it has a counter. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Well. Oh dear God. No. Oh. This matchup's so unbelievably bad. <laughs> oh. I feel like I say, oh, there's a fetch land right on Q. I feel like I say this every time we play Rogues with a Meme or Dream deck, like 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is uh, Dodge Rogues with Meme or Dream. I mean, at least I assume that the people who go 6 0, oh, there's a card draw. The people who go 6 0 oh with these decks, they must just dodge Rogues. It's gotta be. It's gotta be the game plan. They just managed to dodge Rogues. Well, excuse me. More. <clears throat> now that you're a bunch of cards, do you have another counter? Apparently not. Well, we get a token. Still no, so we're seeing the, the Dirge Bat ambition here. And I guess apparently Blood Chiefs are, oh no. And apparently the ambition of, of Blood Chiefs Thirst as well. I mean, I guess like somewhat self-inflicted since we could have got a Swamp, but. At the time, I don't think we could have got a Swamp, honestly. Like, I think getting a Swamp Getting a swamp at the point when we could have gotten one, I think, would have been a disaster. Opponent goes attacking, mills us, hits. This is just like last game. We're dying in every possible way. Beatdowns, mill. Wow, this hasn't even been a little close. Well, mutate, boneyard lurker. Over. Gets us black mana. Finally, swamp. Blood Chief's Thirst, Thief Guild Enforcer. Well, we finally managed to run our opponent out of counter spells for a minute until they draw a bunch of cards. Island mills. If we, oh, I think all of our black man is milled. I was gonna say if we draw black, oh, it is. <laughs> I was gonna say if we draw black swords, we could mutate this dirge band and actually be good, but now it's like literally impossible. Oh no, oh no. Well, uh, you know, brush fire land drop well we made it a little closer game two <laughs> not much but it was it was a little closer <laughs> the ambitious dirge bat is playing out almost exactly like we thought we even had to like raise dead a swamp we even had to like raise dead a swamp just to Oh my goodness, and they draw the end of the story. Well, all right. Go, go, Auspicious Sterix. Over. Garrick's Harbinger hits ya. Okay. Opponent. Vegland. Ten. Cracks it. Seven. I mean, we actually put a little pressure on. If our opponent didn't have the four mana draw four, uh, we might have had a chance to... Oh my goodness, more card draw. If our opponent didn't have the four mana draw four, we might have had a chance to steal this game. Maybe. Or, if we actually could have cast Dirge Bat, that also would have made a difference. Bonnet. 
Yeah, when you can draw four for four at instant speed, that is so insane. I think that's Into the Story is really the card that makes rogues work. I think if Into the Story was not a card, I think this deck would be way worse. Can we win here? Maybe? If our opponent doesn't have removal, all right. No removal, no removal, no removal. Can't block it. Can't block it. Can't block it. No removal. Come on. One time. One time. No removal. Oh. Uh. Sag straws. Sorry, God thief. Oh my God. Ha! It went, oh, wow. The least likely win. Okay. Wow. Mutating onto the brush fire elemental. Let us <laughs> let us get in there and get the win. Oh. Okay, well, uh, we got stuck with the Dirge Bat and Handle game, but <laughs> the whole combo of Brush Fire Elemental and uh, Auspicious Terex <laughs> comes through, comes through somehow. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, we're in business. Well, our mana's good. I think we actually, uh, I think we keep this. I do like to be able to cast our car. Oh, two Sterixes. I mean, Sterix is one of our better cards. It's just a lot of mana. Thieves Guild Enforcer mills us. Could use a two drop. Haven't seen many Lotus Gobras this match. Uh, or a four drop. Four drop is closer than five. It's like, oh. The Rogue's Curve mills us. Untaps, mills us, grows their dorks, mills us. <laughs> Bona hits us. And. Something like Oxymagotus would go an incredibly long way in this matchup, I think. Any, there's counter number one. Anything that we could do from our graveyard would go an incredibly long way. And Boneyard Lurker doesn't really count. Rogues, mills us, grows. Bone it, hits us. I mean, if by some miracle we resolve Lurker and get to mutate on it. Uh, there's a card draw. If by some miracle that happened. Ooh. All right, let's, uh, let's try this. Scoot Swarm. Land drop. So this gives us multiple creatures. The problem is we're dying still. <laughs> Bone it, Artless Act. The problem is we're still just dying to the beatdowns. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's, yeah. That's just, what do we do? What do we do? Oh, are we dead right now? Nine, 10, 11? So we have to chump block to stay alive? Oh, yeah, this one's, well. Uh, our our thrill of victory in game two was short lived. <laughs> Back to what we expect when we're memer dreamy against rogues, which is to get absolutely brutalized <laughs> every time. Every time, uh, fetch land, and yeah, well, one two, yeah, we're super super duper dead. Uh, well, rogues is not the the optimal memer dream matchup, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, more ambitious Dirge Bats on Memer Dream. <laughs> someday, Dirge Bat, someday you're going to win us a game. Please not rogues. Ooh, no lures, no rogues. That's a good sign. Okay. Well, we might still lose brutally, but at least we're not going to lose brutally to rogues. Hmm. This mana, though. Well, I guess we keep it. We do have three lands, technically. Oh, is this rogues? This better not be rogues without Loris. Oh, no. Oh, don't do that to us, magic gods. Ooh, we draw a swamp. Interesting. Now, let's just, since we drew the swamp, let's just fable passage out a green source. Island opponent passing. Oh, crack fable passage. Grab a forest. Well, smashing. If they flash in a rogue, I swear. I swear I'm going to lose it. No, no, don't do not do it. Oh, no. It's rogues with hilarious. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well. 
<laughs> what are the chances? When I saw no lures, I figured we were safe, but... <laughs> it's still rogues. It's still rogues. Opponent going to exile stuff desperately, digging to find a land. Do they find a land? The answer is yes, and it's a fabled passage. Opponent gets in, hits us. Okay. Well, I guess this is our chance to play a Scoot Swarm. Oh, boot it. Boy, our hand has a lot of expensive stuff. Rogues is just so tough for our <laughs> so tough for our deck. <laughs> tough to mutate into all the removal encounters. Oh, boot it. Don't kill it, please. No, no, no. I mean, if our stuff lives, the sand could go off. Greyhorn into two lands, into tokens, into sterics, into phallic. Like, we, we got a we gotta, we gotta shot. But that requires a lot of cards in our opponent's hand that are not removal spells. Or counter spells. Opponent, thinking. Passing. No, well, Shatter Skull Smashing. Tapped. Token. Great Horn on the token. If our opponent's going to kill something, we want it to be the token and not the Scoot Swarm, basically. Uh, about it. Wow, kills a scoop swarm. Okay. Well, this is fine. This does mean we get a land. Oh, do we take the black in case we draw dirge bat? Yeah, all right. Let's let's do it. That's fine. Take another black source. Pass the turn. Well, now we're on to mission two, which is hope this pile lives and we can. <gasps> oh, Sterix, it's happening. Oh my goodness, it's happening. It's happening against rogues. Boat it. Sure, passes. And a fabled passage. Okay. Oh, I wish we had the scoot swarm. Well, let's start with mutating. Well, you we could just play. Huh. Are we going to mutate Sterix? Or are we just going to get... You know what? We're going to Sterix. That is probably the wrong choice. It's the fun choice, but the win the game choice. Okay. You know what? We're gonna mutate Sterix. Whatever. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. All right. Fabled Passage. Crack Fabled Passage. I mean, we get two things for free, which seems like it has a lot of value. Mutate, and we get a land for free, and we get a huge six-six. So grab a land. Two triggers. Well, that is one way to get a dirge bat in play. <laughs> we figured it out. You just got to Sterix into it. <laughs> okay. Well, that wasn't bad. That was reasonable. Uh, po, Nand. I mean, our opponent needs to find some removal. If they can't start killing stuff, they're in a, a whole heap of trouble. And even if they kill one thing, we have a backup stair. Like, our hand is full of powerful six drops. Opponent. I'm going to kill something by the looks. Trying to figure out which. I mean, it's got to be Sterics. You can't not kill the Sterics. Maybe that's the power of Dirge Bat, is that it's bad enough that it sticks around, and then we mutate and get him. <laughs> Opponent passing. Hmm. Okay. Goodness. If this resolves, we just win, I think. Will it resolve, though? Probably not. Hmm. Well, let's go to combat and attack. And see, see if we can make our opponent do something. A brazen bot well 
I guess that's a pretty good sign our opponent doesn't have real removal. Takes the Dershbat's beads. Well, we will Great Horn again. Dershbat. Dershbat. Is our ambition paying off? Okay, drown in the lock to kill it. Yeah, I'll play brush fire. Pass the turn. Oh, so they had removal, but we didn't have enough cards in the graveyard. I see. Opponent of one mind. A little bit worse at uh, at three mana, for sure. Tab land. Ooh, can we resolve someone to our stuff is so expensive. I wish we had not all five and six drops, bone it. Passes. Well, we untap. Oh, that's a good draw. Lotus Cobra. Crack Evolving Wilds. Grab a forest. Pump our dork. Add green. Mutate Sterics on Cobra. Come on. No removal, no counters. No removal, no... Oh my goodness, it resolved. Okay. Sterics down. Trigger. More Cobras. Smash ya. This might be working. All right. Boy, that is some interesting timing for the removal spells, huh? Uh, I mean, I'm glad it's working out how it is. I would probably lean towards fizzling Steric triggers over killing <laughs> three fours, but well, to each their own. <laughs> Our opponent is playing rogues, and they're playing rogues in a rogue manner. So maybe, maybe, okay, so they have removal for the Sterics too. Maybe it's a maybe it's a flavor thing. Rogue rogues, bone it. Finally grows their thieves guild enforcer. They just have like ten removal spells in hand. <laughs> I mean, it is rogue, so I guess that's possible. And they have drawn a lot of cards. Bone it passes. Huh. Well, let's play Garrick. Oh, resolves. Okay. Blow up Thieves Guild Enforcer. Draw a card. Go to combat, attack. Wow. Okay. I was expecting them to try to... Well, I guess this works. So opponent goes to seven. Flashes in a thought thief. We replay a Lotus Cobra. Pass the turn. So we're going to lose our Garrick. Maybe that was too greedy to just go for the kill rather than... Rather than a uh, plussing, we really want to try to close out the game. The problem is our opponent has all those draw fours. So if we don't close out the game, there's a decent chance we're going to end up in this position where we can't close out the game and our opponent just counters and kills everything we do. Ashiok. Okay. Makes a dork. We draw a land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we could get two attacks? 
That doesn't win, though. We could also Faleth. You know what? I think we just go for the win. They only have one mana up, so we will Auspicious Sterex mutate on brush fire like in theory unless this one mana can do something this should give us lethal sterex harbinger land pump uprising oh i think we got there okay so this is more like a Bigger, more controlling version of Rogues, which maybe that's better news for us. I am less scared of Ashiok than... Oh, come on now, magic gods. Phonic <laughs> goes to one, but not dead. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, so maybe we're still not gonna win. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thieves Guild of Horrors are enough cards to the graveyard. Sure. Steals our Harbinger. Plays a land. One card in hand. about it attacks exiles okay two lands that's fine is there a last card there and it might be all right no blocks is all right opponent gets to steal something good wow oh no we're gonna lose we're gonna lose it we're gonna lose takes our garrick yeah wow this is brutal 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 yeah i, I think that's i think that's just gonna kill us now Oh no! Opponent kills our Lotus Cobra. You messed with the wrong he makes another dork. We draw land while we play Faleth. Make some plants. Draw carry added. Play carry added. Play a land. Pass the turn, but I am not convinced any of this is going to matter. I think we're still just straight up dead. Wow. Zarasan, low mage's domination to steal our Garrick, and oh. The rogue nightmare continues on Memer Dream <laughs> every week. This is what exactly what I said. This is exactly what I said was going to happen. Is if we can't close out the game quickly, they're going to win the late game with our card advantage, and then and then we're going to get our opponent almost dead, but not dead. And that is precisely what has uh, taken place here. Like to the letter, we got him to one, but we can't get the last one. We're holding out hope that Morag can maybe, maybe let us sneak out the, the win. Opponent. Passing. Ashiok thinking. All right, well, we lose our land. Okay. Well, this is it, this is it, this is it. We draw land, well, we will.
Play more rock. Draw a card. Play Skew Swarm. Go to combat. This isn't going to do it, though. We're still short. They just get to wrath our board. Everything in our opponent. Wow. So close, yet so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Has another Brazen Borrower as their last, last, last card. Bounces Morog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We lose our pump and we scoop. Oh, oh boy. Oh, rogues, 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 rogues. The blowouts never end. Oh, hmm. Well, hopefully we play some other decks. That would be sweet. I would enjoy playing a non-rogue deck with, a <laughs> with this deck at least once. Apparently it's just all rogues all the time this week on Meme or Dream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I really feel like rogues, my thinking on rogues is, I don't think they're too good by any stretch, but I think you do need to have a plan for them. And I think meme or dream decks uh, haven't really reached the having a sideboard plan stage for the most part, or having a plan for a specific deck stage. At least that's my impression of them. For the most part, it looks like decks where it's like, okay, these are like cool cards, they kind of synergize. I would say like, I don't know, level level one deck building? I don't even know. Is level one deck building and just, like, throw random cards together? Maybe it's level two, but you're at the level where you're like, okay, what can I do with my deck that would be kind of sweet? And you see in these decks uh, kind of the development of deck building, where you're like, all right, I have, like, Mutate, Auspicious Sterix goes good with Mutate, Scoot Swarm goes good with Mutate, and then you have, like, Landfall synergies, and I have lands that are two Landfall triggers. So you see that, uh, but you don't see, like, the next level, which is like, all right, what am I going to play against? And how does my deck beat my opponent's deck? I think that's like the next level and building a sideboard is somewhere somewhere in this stage too but I think that is kind of the next level where you're not just thinking okay how can I make my deck be as sweet as possible you're looking at your deck in the context of the metagame and thinking okay I'm probably going to play against rogues when I play against rogues what is my plan in that matchup and I think that that's why rogues ends up being despised by some segment of the arena community is it is a deck that you need a plan for. In other matchups, if you just play a bunch of like powerful, somewhat synergistic stuff, sometimes your powerful, somewhat synergistic stuff is probably going to just be more synergistic and powerful than your opponent's stuff. If you're playing random gruel deck, they don't draw Ember Cleaver or whatever. But Rogues, out of all the heavily played standard decks, it's a deck that you need a plan for the most. Uh, because of how its synergies work, because it has a fast like tempo -y clock. So I feel like that is kind of the... The next level, and if you're if you're building decks and brewing decks, keep that in mind. And it's not a knock on the deck. I think it's a it's a progression that you go through. I think you you start off building just you know bad random decks where you throw cards together. Then you get to the point where you're like, okay, like how can I make my deck as good as possible? And then eventually, hopefully, you get to the point where you're like, all right, how can I make my deck as good as possible? against my opponent's deck how can i interact with my opponent's plan and then eventually you could keep going down those levels and be like okay so my opponent uh is gonna have a plan for my plan how can i plan for my opponent's plan to attack my plan uh, and just keep going down that that spiral for uh for infinity but yeah, I think that is a I think that is the issue that we run into against rogues on Meme Dream. Well play a great horn. About it. Casting mutate cards without mutate always feels a little bad. <laughs> Brazen Mara where bounces the great horn. About it. We got so close in that first game too. That was like so close. 
Oh boy, I'm a little afraid a, a blowout might be about to happen. We'll play the Great Horn again. Fabled Passage, go. So the problem is, if our opponent, they can flash in their Brazen Borrow for sure. If they can follow this up with Ashiok, bounce our Great Horn, we're just like so far behind on the tempo front. Opponent untaps. Well, no Ashiok this turn. Temple of Deceit. To the top. Goes attacking, sure. Hits us. Well, let's Great Horn the Great Horn. Over. Gives him lands. Uh, definitely want. I think we just go swamp, swamp. Get a swamp, get a swamp. Okay. It might be Dirgebat's time to shine. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Do we keep living? Does our Great Horn pile keep living? That's also a big question. Opponent does have a deep pass. The turn. And Ooh. timeout win also possible. Unlikely, but we are like amazingly far ahead of in time right now. Uh, build it. Combat attacks. Sure. Are you going to Zerisan, our Lotus? Apparently. All right. Sure. So opponent gets to take our Lotus Cobra? Eh, that's not the, the end of the world. It does mean they can bounce our Great Horns, which is annoying, but. About it. Passing. Well, we will. Hmm. So we do need to deal with this Sarasan. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, play a swamp. Crack a fable passage. Get a forest. Oh, how can we make this work? Let's... Oh man, this mana. So not good. Well, let's mutate a Boneyard Lurker. Brazen Borrower returns. Well, Blood Chief's Thirst. Get rid of Zerasad. Pass the turn. The mutate on Dirge Bat is just so expensive. It's powerful, but six mana is just a lot. Opponent going to Templar to see make mana with our Lotus Cobra. And Cling to Dust, sure, draws a card. Opponent is getting low on cards until they draw something powerful. Opponent passes. Well, mutate Great Horn. Over. 
Actually, over was a bad choice, but whatever. Uh, I don't think it really matters. Grab a swamp. Fabled passage. Play a mountain. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent takes it. And Raisin Borrower. Um, yeah, let's do this. Mutate. We resolved a dirge bat. It happened. <laughs> it took a lot of migratory great hordes, but it actually the ambitious dirge bat was resolved. Uh, over, I guess. Kill brazen borrower. The problem is we're set up to get about a million for one if our opponent, if our opponent can kill this pile. That is. A lot of stuff going away at once. Opponent untaps. Fable Passage. Cracks Fable Passage. Big question is really, does our opponent find Cardra? If our opponent finds a draw for, we're we're uh we're gonna be in really bad shape. What's keeping us around at the moment is our opponent does only have three cards in hand. Ouch. Well, that is precisely what we needed not to happen. Opponent gets and hits us. We will draw more lands. Well, one, two, three... Four, five, six. Actually, you know what? Let's go one, two, three first. Let's just mutate Greyhorn. On the Dirge Bat. Under. Kill stuff. Get a land. get a land Sterex mutate please we need this one oh okay over get a land out of the deck Come on, big hits, big hits, big hits. Get a land out of the deck. Big hits. Big Sterix hits. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what we were hoping for. Scoot, scoot. Add some mana. Get back a Cobra. Fable Passage. Scoots, grow some plants, and this one should be over now. Oh, I, okay. Oh, well, that's the power of the deck. Sometimes you spin it to win it, and uh, the spinning can be very good. Well, run it back. Run it back. Can we beat rogues? And I got to say, Dirge Bat was actually pretty uh, essential to that win. If we did not have Dirge Bat, I don't know if we would have won that game. I think Dirge Bat was responsible in large part <laughs> so the ambitious dirge bat it's paying off when we actually get the mana to resolve it we've also had the game where it just sits in our hand forever but when we resolve it ambitious dirge bat does uh does some work all right on to game three against rogues for a second time and yeah oh oh hmm we could have mixed together our first and our second hand. We would have had a, a nut draw, but... <laughs> As it is, are we going to five or are we keeping this hand? I guess we probably got to keep this. Yeah, they'll, they'll keep, and, uh, keep and pray. 
Do we want double red? And we'll put, let's put a forest to the bottom. The old keep and pray. This hand's not good, but who knows? Uh, more evolving wilds was not at the top of our to draw list. And there's a thieves guild mills. Two cards that were on our to draw list. Abundant. Fable passage gets in, hits us. The problem now is Zerasan's going to be insane if they uh, can actually get in with it. And our deck doesn't believe in instant speed removal. Pretentious. Instant speed removal, a little bit pretentious. <laughs> Sorcery speed is where it's at when it comes to killing things. Oh, another one. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, opponent is so good at milling action. And we're so good at drawing lands. That's a, not a great mix. Opponent going to crack Fabled Passage. These Thieves Guild Enforcers about to get massive. Oh, so many good cards in the... That's like half of our best cards <laughs> from these two Thieves Guild on turn two. I mean, I guess in theory, Boneyard Lurker could get something back. I don't know what the odds are of that actually happening. No blocks. Opponent passes. Boy, more lands. Evolving Wilds at green. Crack Evolving Wilds. Get a Swamp at green. Mutate Lurker. Hopefully, please, no interaction. Over. Get back. Hmm. How worried are we about dying to Zerasan? A lot? Probably a lot. So, hmm, boy, I mean, all these cards are pretty good off Zerasan. I think our best card is probably Sterex, but I'm most worried about our opponent getting Falith. Well, we're going to take Sterex. Um, no attacks. Oh, come on, no Zerasads. No Zerasads. I mean, I guess the good news is if our opponent does Zerasad. Oh. Okay, this is the best case scenario. This should open us up to Auspicious Sterixing and just hoping and getting back Falith from the graveyard so Zerasan's not going to ruin our life. Tap land. About it passes. So if we play Cobra, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, play Cobra. Fabled Passage. Green, green. Crag Fabled Passage. Get a Swamp. Green, green. All right. If Sterix is good, we got a chance. Mutate Sterix on the Boneyard Pile. Over. Get back Phalith. Wow, Lotus Cobras for years. Okay, well, hit ya. Hmm. I don't know if that's good or not. We have all four Lotus Cobras. And then Shatter Skull Smashing. Ooh. All right. Bounce that Sterix. Bounce that Sterix. That's fine. That is fine. Yes, yes, yes. That's all right. We can just do it again. We will get rid of a Mountain. That's actually probably good for us. Can we, we can just reset this up, I think. Opponent. Oh, another Boneyard Lurker. All right, so. Evolving Wilds. Green, green, green. Crack Evolving Wilds. Oh, this might be a turn. Green, green, green. Sterix Mutate. On Lotus Cobra. Over. Fetch land. Green, green, green. Mutate Boneyard Lurker on the Sterix pile. Under. Get back a Scoot Swarm. Green, green, green. Play Scoot Swarm. 
Mutate Boneyard Lurker. Under. Get back Scoot Swarm. Get back Vivian. I guess that's one way to clear out the graveyard. Oh man, we this is a combo. We are going off. We are Oh! <laughs> Take it out rogues! Take it out rogues! Wow, that was an insane turn! Wow! I will say, I gained a new respect for Boneyard Lurker. That was an absurd combo turn. That was ridiculous. And we ended up with our Dirge Bat. Double win! Dirge Bat on the battlefield. Kind of a triple win. Dirge Bat on the battlefield. Actually win the match. And it was against Rogues, our all-time meme or dream nemesis. Rogues is like... On against the odds or much of brew, what Tron is in modern, Rogues is that in standard. The deck that we never beat, but when we do beat it, it is the best feeling. And we got there. Dirge bats, <laughs> Great Hordes, Sterixes. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. More ambitious Dirge Batting on Beaver Dream. Oh, please not Rogues. I think if we run into Rogues again, I'm scooping, honestly. <laughs> like I don't think I don't think it's I don't think it's worth it to play it again. I'll play food, I'll play gruel, anything but rogues. Eh, it sounds okay. Yeah. Not exciting, but our mana's functional and we got some decent cards. Vivian could be good. Opponent doing a bit of mulliganing. Huh. Well, no Luris does mean it's hopefully not rogues. Forest go. Try you, man. Well, all right. Lotus Cobra go. So it's looks like it's ramp. I don't know if that makes our life better, honestly. Opponent has a Bone Crusher. Gotta always expect Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher's in like a thousand percent of standard decks these days, so. Bone cr Crusher and a Love Strike Beast. That is that is the format. Would not mind Throne of Aldrain being banned outright. <laughs> just ban the whole set. Be done with it. Be done with it. There's still like five or ten cards from the set that are just the best thing in standard by a long shot. And uh, it's a little, little disappointing that perhaps Keldheim will not ever get its chance to shine. Not because it's a bad set, but just because Eldering is so insane. No, Fabled Passage. Crack Fabled Passage. I'm not sure if I have a negate or something. I only don't have a negate. Float of mana. If our opponent was going to do that, probably would be wiser to do it before we make mana to play Vivian, but... Uh, make a beast with. Yeah, let's go reach. Garrick on top. We would like lands. Crushy Crusher did for our opponent. And Amiria's call. Well, Great Horn. Actually, let's just do that. Yeah, let's just mutate over. Get a swamp. Vivian. Vigilant Beast. No attacks. Next turn we could potentially start scooting. Opponent's gonna need a wrath. I mean they could. They got a lot of white man. I actually do not know what our opponent's deck's doing. Like four color control? Bone it. Attacks. Well, block bone crusher. Pathway passes. Well, play brush fire. Scoot swarm. We could be playing into a Wrath, but we have <laughs> our two one of Planeswalkers, which is pretty good Wrath protection. Opponents. 
kills us Goose War, but we do get a copy. So we're going to need more removal than that. Go to combat. Hit ya. Yeah, opponent's probably going to need a an actual hard wrath, I think. Dig up. Vigilant Beast. Go. I still don't really know what our opponent's... What is our opponent's deck trying to do? Like, what? Are, what is this building towards? Pathway. Shark Typhoon. Hmm. Uh, well, can this kill... Cannot kill enchantments. So. Well, let's... Scoot Swarm. Shatter Skull Smashing. Tapped. Get Scooting. Vivian. Vigilant Beast. Hit ya. Now to four. Do you have a Wrath? Pony needs Hard Wrath. Do they have a Wrath? Do they have a Sweeper? Shark Typhoon's not going to stop this horde. There's always, there's always more Scoot Bugs. We saw that. Like, our opponent had the removal, but... Scoot bugs are hard to kill once you get to uh, to six lands. <laughs> okay, helps with conquerors. That's sure. Ah, uh, the dying grasp of a four color control deck. Well, yeah, vote it. <laughs> did not have the wrath and did not live. Uh, that went pretty well. Hmm. Bad news is we don't have much of a sideboard plan for this deck, really. This might be the, the time to go down the Dirge Bats. Like, go down an Uprising. Go down a Dirge Bat. Go up to Gem Razors. And run it like that. Still didn't really get to see much of our opponent's deck. Some sort of four-color control mid-range pile, but... Beyond that... We didn't get to see a whole lot. All right. Memer Dream. It is a little, even with half a sideboard, or uh, 75%, whatever we're at, 9 out of 15. That is a big step forward compared to uh, to no sideboard where we had been. I got to not lean into the camera, apparently, or things. Uh, my green screen gets wonky. Wait, no, maybe it's good. Hello. Oh, there. Yeah, you see it. Um, Yeah. I guess this is okay. Uh, Evolving Wilds, and yeah, let's just crack it. Technically not correct, but <laughs> uh, in the spirit of Memer Dream, <laughs> no, I think, uh, I mean, it just doesn't make that much of a difference. We know what we want. We know we're getting a forest. We know we're cracking in our opponent's end step, so. And our opponent knows what we're doing, so it's not like there's a an information val uh, value to be gained. We actually have Dirgebat mana, which is sweet. Opponent plays a land. Well, uh, yeah. Harbinger. Not great in this matchup. Still get Scorching Dragon fired. Yeah. Well, now we're looking a bit slow. Mountain and ooh, Narset. Okay. Picks up, gives life. Well, uh, let's play more Harbingers. Play a Swamp past the turn. I mean, Narset can kill it. Narset's a really good Planeswalker that just doesn't see play, but... Oh, boy. So Narset's going to ultimate? That probably is bad news. Pona's just, like, rushing the ultimate. Well, uh, play a Swamp. Auspicious Sterex. Go. Uh, about it. So maybe we actually want the Blood Chief Thirst. Maybe that is the sideboard card that our Dirge Bat Pile needs. Uh, opponent. I mean, the problem is Narset Ultimate's really pretty good. 
two damage whenever he casts a non-creature spell. Like, over the course of a a reasonably long game, that is going to beat us eventually. Huh. I'm assuming our opponent wants us to kill that, so we're not going to. Land. Opponent. All right, there's an emblem. Well, let's see what they can do. So opponent's going to have shocks for days. All right, Shatter Skull Smashing plus Emblem. Well, play Scoot Swarm. Play Brush Fire. Fabled Passage. Crack Fabled Passage. Get a... Yeah, let's get our second mountain. Get a mountain. Mana looking good. Make some Scoots. I mean, our opponent could definitely have a Sweeper, though. And we are out of lands, and we're really out of good things in general. Oh, boy. How do you beat a Dream Trawler? I don't know if we do. Opponent passes. Oh, Great Horn's interesting. Well, all right. We just gotta go for it. So we will play a Scoot Swarm. We will mutate Great Horde on a Scoot Swarm. Over. We will get a Forest. Trigger, trigger. Scoot, scoot. Oh, here's the bugs. All right, uh, pass the turn. <laughs> Pwn it. Gonna gain a bunch of life and draw a bunch of cards. I mean, if they find a wrath, then we're just very dead. Dream Trawler draws a card. Hits us to 13. Goes up to 24. Fable Passage. Cracks Fable Passage. Opponent, sadly for them, does not have Scoot Swarm to go with their fetch land. Plades and Bone Crushes our face. Narsets our face. Plays a Bone Crusher. Well, Fabled Passage. Gives him triggers. Crack it. Get a land. Get a handful of triggers. Go to combat, attack. It all comes down to this. It all comes down to this turn. Do we survive the turn? Opponent. Oh! Their last card was a giant killer. What a what a card. Oh, man. So if our opponent draws any non-creature spell, they win the game. And also most of their creature spells. Because it seems like they're mostly adventure cards. So opponent blocks and blocks. They take a ton, but not lethal. Well, this is it. This is it. They get two draws, any non-creature, and we're dead. Because Dream Trawler's five, and then Narset Emblem. Yeah, I, well, we talked about the Narset Emblem uh, many turns ago, and looks like it's going to get us. Down to two. And, well, I drew a Bone Crusher. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, well, that's why you don't like Planeswalker's Ultimate. Uh, okay, so. Blood Chief's Thirst in. We need ways to deal with... Yes, these Garrick Harbingers are real bad. All right, 
Blood Chief Sir said, we need ways to not let our opponent nurse that emblem. If our opponent did not nurse that emblem, I think we would have won that game. Even through the Dream Trawler. Ah, oh, Dream Trawler is so obnoxious. All right, well, here we go. Come on, come on, give us a win, give us a win. We're going for we're going for the dream. We're trying, opponent. Mulliganing for the dream trawler. Well, we will brush fire elemental. Hit ya. Pass the turn. Opponent. Pathway. Scorching dragon fire. Opponent does have a lot of removal. Um a play Lotus Cobra. Play Evolving Wilds. Add a mana. Crack Evolving Wilds. Add a mana. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess we go green. Carry added. Go. Well, we got a little ramp start. We'll see, see if it's good enough. Opponent. Pathway. Skyclave Apparition. We draw nothing. We play a land, we pass the turn. Opponent. Birth of Melitus. Gets a land. Plays the land. Removal spell number four! Oh! Oh, opponent has had removal every turn, every single one, and we have had a land every turn. No. Oh, poor deck. Oh, no. Well, looks like we are uh, swiftly heading towards meme. Opponent, land, bone crusher. Hey, guess what? It's our friend. Our friendly neighborhood land off the top. Morag. <clears throat> opponent probably wasn't expecting that, but... I am also not expecting it to do anything. Opponent. Yeah, that's... Whew, that was a, a very, very good uh, six for our opponent. And I think our opponent has drawn as many removal spells as... Our opponent has quite literally drawn more removal spells than we have drawn non-land cards. And yeah, this, one, this one's over. This one's over. Yeah, down to ten. We draw Asterix out of Empty Board. I guess we'll play it. Even though it doesn't really do anything. Play a Forest past the turn. Bone it. Elspeth Conqueror's Death picks it up. <sighs> well, at least it's not Rogues. Bone goes to Combat Attacks. I mean, this one's just over in multiple ways. We're not going to block. I'm sure they have another Bone Crusher or... Or a uh, Scorching Dragon Fire. Uh, play with Scoot Swarm. Opponent going to draw a card. I'll uh, play a land, make a copy. Opponent does have Scorching Dragon Fire. Well, pass the turn. <laughs> so many removal spells. Opponent. <laughs> Call of Amiria, and we are back to being super dead. Oh boy, I thought we had a shot, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, the good news is, uh, even though we're losing, we're not losing to rogues that game, so. Score one for us. <laughs> oh, I actually think that that's. I don't even know. I don't. Even, I don't even really know. Hmm. Don't know what to say about that one. Other than our opponent had a ridiculous amount of removal, just like an insane amount of removal. Got janked out by Narset in game two, and then game three. Whoo! We drew like 10 lands and our opponent drew like 10 removal spells and they didn't even need all of them. <laughs> we we drew so many lands that I think our opponent had removal left over at the end of that game. Well, uh, let's see what we're up against this time. All right, can we dirge back? Can we 
get a get a win with this deck. I mean, get another win. We did win one. We did win one. We beat Rogues once. So there is a, a bit of good news. Opponent deep in the mulligan tank. All right, uh, Evolving Wilds, go. Uh, boot it. All right, not rogues. Another another slight win by not being against rogues. Get a forest to the top. Well, play a land. Play a Lotus Cobra. Go. If Lotus Cobra lives, it'd be sweet. Then we can mutate a Great Heart. All right, that works. When it gets in, hits us. Sure. Uh, we will add a green. Mutate. Over. Get a forest. And, you know what? We're going to smack you. <laughs> oh, Cobra Aggro. Opponent. Tamarack calls the dead. Meals a Croxa. We are going to need something to go with our lands at some point. Ugh, more lands. Well, yeah, um, hmm. Play land. Mutate. Get two. I mean, we're thinning the deck. We're doing a really good job of thinning the deck. Which I guess is helpful. But we're also just kind of flooding out. Well, in our bonnet, pass the turn. We need a scoot. We need a sterics. We need morog. We need literally any of the big things in our deck. Any big thing, we will take it. Opponent plays a land, has an ox in the graveyard, and a. Wait, wasn't there a Croxa? Oh, they exiled Croxa. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Liliana. Oh, this deck's so bad. It's <laughs> oh boy, I think we're firmly entering beef tier. I think I figured it out. I think the thing is, now that we've played this deck, I think I figured out the issue with it, which is... And maybe, yeah, all right. And uh, and maybe figured out how it could go six wins. So, we kind of talked about in the intro that we have like half mutate synergies and then half landfall synergies that are very, very, very loosely related. Like you would say, like oh, mutating on brushfire elemental is sweet or whatever. But really, it's kind of like a gruel landfall deck. Mixed with a, I guess, mostly Gruul Mutate deck. The thing is, if you draw the right... Ha like, we've seen some really explosive Mutate games. We've also seen some, like, get in with your landfall creature games. The problem is, when you draw a mixture of those things, uh, it's pretty awkward. The secondary problem is, the landfall deck pretty much wants you to be relatively low land count. The Mutate deck with Hysterix wants you to be relatively high land count. Uh, so you have like these two, two decks that are in the same colors and look a little similar, but are really doing kind of opposite things. So when we happen to draw one half of the deck or the other, the deck feels pretty good. But then when we have the games where we just draw... You know, a little bit of a little bit of uh, mutate, a little bit of landfall, some random cards that no one remembers were in standard. Those games, those are the tough ones, or the flood out games, where we just, for some reason, uh, draw an infinite, an infinite number of lands. I mean, I guess the reason is we have a lot of lands in this deck, which I think again, like. Having a lot of lands is good for, like, Aspicious Sterex and some of the Mutate Synergies. Not necessarily as good with the other Synergies. Ponet has a Spike Field Hazard, all right. 
Well, go go brush fire elemental, I guess. I guess we should have played the mountain last turn. That was a slight misstep, probably, because we missed a landfall trigger. Opponent, swamp, and Croxa. Life's getting worse. No, well, sorry, Dirge Bat. <laughs> oh, opponent. Blood Chief. Oh, boy. Blood Chief's Thirst. I've also noticed that other decks in Standard just play a ton of removal, and our deck plays... <laughs> plays the Mamba in the soul. Jeez. Oh, and our deck plays the Mamba in the sideboard. Boom. Look out. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Oh, just kidding. It's a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> what are you going to do, Rakdos? <laughs> Oh, and they're one card away from Croxa. And there's one card for Croxa. And we... Well, we'll wait till they cast Croxa. Then we will uh, we'll scoop it up. Ooh, we've had some, like, reasonable Meme or Dream decks lately. And the funny thing about this one... Yeah, there's Croxa. The funny thing about this one is... It has some decent cards. Like, I actually like the Mutate Archetype in Standard. I think it's fun and, like, semi-competitive. On the other hand... Oh, boy, this build. Hi, hi, hi. I guess it also shows the importance of, uh, of dual lands. I think there are decks that can take advantage of the all-basic mana base. I'm not sure this is one of them. All right, one more shot. One more shot. I think we're already in meme territory, record-wise. But we've won a game, a 2-3... and three. You know, that would that would be reasonable. That would not be the end of the world for this deck. Considering it's tried to play the most ambitious Dirge Bats of all time. Considering, you know, we didn't quite get all the way to building a full sideboard. Close, closer. We're getting there. Although, does the Mamba count? Like, should we even count that as being in the sideboard? <laughs> is it is it playable enough of a card to actually count as a, a sideboard option? That's that's up for debate still. So many, always so many lands. Always so many lands. I mean, I guess that's how the deck's built, but it always feels like we have these hands that are many lands and a couple of things, and then those things die, and now we just have many lands. Opponent, carefully considering their opening seven. Still considering their opening seven. I kind of wonder why Arena gives people so long with their opening seven if they don't make an action. All right, opponent, we're here. It does seem it does seem slightly excessive to me. Well, let's just forest go. See what our opponent's up to. All right, looks like most likely team of ramp. Most likely our Lotus Cobra getting stomped on. About it. Hmm. Well, play Evolving Wilds. Make a green mana. Play Skew Swarm. Go to combat. Attack ya. Hit ya. Vivian's a, Vivian's a good draw. Vivian gives us uh, some card advantage. Which is pretty helpful. We're not to full-on Scoot Swarm mode yet, but... Oh, wow. Another... People like their four-color piles, don't they? Try... <laughs> Katera Triobe, Katera Triobe, Castle Lockwood. And I thought our... Uh, what are we taking here? And I thought our Dirge Bats were ambitious. <laughs> Voto's got the ambitious Castle Lockwoods. Oh, all right. Untap. Uh... Fabled Passage. Add a mana. Crack Fabled Passage. Get a Forest. Add a mana. Play a Vivian. Hit ya. Beast ya. I mean, this is not going poorly. Until our opponent plays a Wrath, but if they don't play a Wrath, it's not going poorly. A Crow and War. Oh, 
takes Lotus Cobra. Oh, opponent, opponent. That was your, <laughs> that was your first and your biggest mistake. Um, okay, so Great Horn on Scoot over. Get a mounted. Fabled Passage. Copy it. Crack Fabled Passage. Get a Forest. Copy it. Lotus Cobra. Vivian. Vigilance. Smash you with everything. Oh, I mean, the deck can go off like a Mutate deck. When we draw the Mutate half but why do we have the other half i don't know <laughs> i don't know there we've had like two or three games where we've really went off like this and it's really powerful but we only have like two sterixes we don't have the max number of great horn like it's weird it's a it's a weird setup all right i feel good about where we're at though even through the ukraine war we're just so far ahead on board now about it <laughs> Whoa, Strider. All right, yeah. Well, they got us. <laughs> Pony is fighting the good fight. Yeah, make Savannah. Sure, sure. Heartless act. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, opponents had a good turn of their own, but we know we have this uh, Sterix coming. And opponent <laughs> realizes that turn's not good enough. So our opponent's like second stealing, I guess? Hmm. Well, as per tradition, Garrick's Uprising out. Garrick's Harbinger probably out. Gem Razor is in, and we're going to try it again. We're going to try it again. Last chance for the Mamba to prove its worth. This is the last chance. If it doesn't perform here, then we write it off as not being a, not being a sideboard playable. <laughs> Fail, failed this twice. Two games. That's enough. Done. <laughs> oh, sample size of two. But maybe, maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one where the Mamba like kills the Woe Strider and... Wins us the game. <laughs> Plus, worst case, I mean, we get to listen to the the hiss sound effect, which is the best part of a uh, of playing Mamba by far. Yeah, that's actually a functional hand, and we have the gem razor, which is nice. You know, shatter skull smashing go. Uh, about it cracks. And. Grabs a swamp. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Mountain. Skyglaive Shade. Certainly. Ooh, black mana. We would also would not mind getting, getting a dirge bat on the battlefield. We've gotten a couple, so we've proven that it's possible, but... So far, I don't think we've proven that Splashing Dirge Bat is uh, <laughs> wise or good. <laughs> oh, boot it. Tap land. Kills our Cobra. That does slow us down. Well, Swamp, you. Well, that actually slows us down a lot. Like a scary amount. Because now a Crow and War is going to be on. And the downside of Gem Razor is artifact destruction. Is it does need to be mutating for it to be doing anything. Bonet shades us. Yeah, down to 14. Whoa, Strider. Not feeling especially confident. Greyhorn, go. Oh, I'm envisioning this being stolen and then sacrificed and us crying and losing. What is up?
with these these off-color triomes? All right, Lizak. All right, so opponents just got removal for years. More Woes Riders. Hits us a ton. I don't play a land. Auspicious Derex. And we might just be too far behind here. I mean, if our opponent has literally anything, we're dead. If they can steal this, if they can kill this... Opponent's going to cash in some goats to look for lethal. I mean, I assume once they leave a card on top of their deck, it means we're dead. We'll see. Sacking the goats, though, does theoretically mean our opponent does not have lethal in hand. Opponent. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Well, kill a Woes Rider. Down to two, which is sadly Bone Crusher Rage. And Bone Crusher it is. <laughs> uh, well, all right. Last game for the Mamba. If Mamba wants to legitimize itself as a sideboard option in Keldime Standard, it's gotta it's gotta prove it here. If if we lose this game and Mamba doesn't do anything, then I guess down with the down with the snakes. <laughs> uh, all right one last shot we are on the play that's good always these million land hands with this deck all right well <laughs> all right sure <laughs> we'll keep it uh probably just put morag to the bottom All right, we will keep. We'll put Morag to the bottom. Uh, booted. Puts a card to the bottom. No Mamba yet. No Mamba. No, Valving Wilds go. Uh, booted. Still don't really understand why they're trioming. Are they just playing triomes to cycle? Is that the, is that the idea? It's just to cycle. Uh, if this Lotus Cobra live, our life gets a lot better. I'm sure it's exceedingly unlikely. Boy, they have like every possible removal spell. <laughs> every every one. We've seen Eliminates, we've seen Heartless Axe, we've seen Bow Crusher Giants. Uh, if it can kill something, it's probably in our opponent's deck. Skyclave Shade. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get a Black Source. Opponent passes. We'll play a land, play Great Horn. Pass the turn. Opponent. Thinking about killing our Great Horn. Something's up. Something's up with these. Why are you playing all these triomes? I don't get it. I don't get it. It's blowing my mind why you would play these. Have we seen anything that isn't just straight Rakdos? I don't think we have. Is this just uh, someone addicted to, to three mana cycling? Seems possible. All right. After some deliberation, opponent attacks. We will not trade our Great Horn with your stomp. Opponent plays a Croxa. And a land. Well, we will continue to draw lands. Hit ya. Aboot it. Fable Passage. Cracks it. Three cards in hand. Crocs of the graveyard, so kind of four cards in hand. Gets a swamp. Oh dear, that's bad. Wrinkle. I think they're just addicted to triomes. A lover of tap lads. <laughs> Alright, well. Opponent sacks the shade. That's kind of a combo. I don't play Vivian. Make a Reacher. 
duty lies in variation. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that gets the cards of the graveyard for for Croxa in this one. Yeah, I mean it's it's over. Photo kills Vivian. Croxa returns. We discard Faleth. We're drawing brush fire. And uh yeah. Oh well this one was the meme of memes. I mean, we technically did win a match with it. Uh, wow. Yeah, Sek was a uh, Sek was pretty bad. This one, this one was pretty bad. So, how could someone have gotten six wins in a row with this deck? Uh, discounting, you know, opponents uh, keeling over mid match and uh, getting free wins. I'm assuming you draw the good parts of the deck and don't draw the bad parts. So, okay, what was, what was the issues or criticism with this deck? And what do we like about the deck? So, the big thing is, it's kind of like a mutate deck, except you're not playing the good mutate cards. or not playing many of the good mutate cards. Like, the package of Scoot Swarm, Ramp Stuff, Great Horn, Auspicious Derricks, that's a relatively strong package. But for some reason, we have two Auspicious Derricks. We have three Great Horns. We're splashing the Dirge Bat. Oh, Dirge Bat. So Dirge Bat, yes, we did technically find the ability to cast it some games. We did have one game where I think it was good and it killed something. We also had games where we had to search out other colors of mana instead of black and cast our stuff. It had Dirge Bat Sticky in hand. So I'm going to say the Dirge Bat Splash, uh, probably not good. And I just don't really know what the idea of this deck is. I think now that we've played the deck, I kind of, I don't, I don't even know. The best I can come up with is it's like somewhat budget. Someone doesn't have the dual lands to play like a, a more powered up version of the deck. So somewhat budget. I'm not sure who doesn't have random commons to play a full set of them, but you definitely would want more Sterixes. I'm not sure why there isn't a more fleshed out package around the mutate plan. I have no idea what Garrick's Uprising is doing. We counted the creatures before. It's eight creatures in the deck that can trigger it. That's asking for a lot to go right. Like, just getting rid of Garrick's Uprising for more copies of Aspicious Sterix, that would improve the deck by itself. Uh, not that Garrick's Uprising is bad. It can be a good card, but you need a bunch of power for greater creatures. And our deck is just not built around four greater creatures heavily enough. Uh, it makes three mana, uh, three CM3 creatures, three CMC creatures, not big enough, 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 not big enough. Like, there's a huge list of creatures it doesn't do anything with. So, I don't know. It feels like like two decks that could be good mashed together. Like, could you play a Brushfire Elemental, Morag, Phalanx Landfall deck that was good? Probably. Could you play a Mutate deck, maybe even with Dirge Bat, that was good? Definitely. Or good enough. Definitely. But when you mash them all together, it just feels very disjointed. We flooded out a lot. We had uncastable Dirge Bats. And maybe the biggest thing is we just played against Infinite Removal. And the bugaboo of mutate is if your stuff keeps dying it doesn't do anything and when you're having to cast your great horn is a four mana three four and you're having to run out your sterix is just a six six it's so much worse than when you're mutating and getting triggers and doing things and we just played a against every single round like it started off with the rogues killing all of our stuff but then throughout the entire five matches it was just bone crusher into scorching dragon fire into eliminate into uh blood chief thirst like you name a removal spell it was coming out whatever after. we had that game against the five color narset pile where our opponent literally just removal 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 we top decks of lands and that was it so uh, i don't know i mean it's definitely considered a meme there's no doubt about it you can't be a dream and go one in four i do think obviously no reason i have a sideboard and the sideboard's even worse than we thought at first zagath mamba it kind of proved itself to just not be worth it like could i imagine a world where this card was good i could i i could construct a scenario where it was good against attack with a lot of little creatures and not much removal sadly it either just dies or it doesn't really have an impact on the game because the opponent's creatures are too big to kill. And 
we don't even want to mutate on it that much. If it was like whenever a creature mutates, give something negative two, negative two, that would be kind of interesting. But just like you have to mutate onto the snake, so you're not mutating onto like a skew swarm or something. So all around, this is a deck that I think if you want to play a deck like this, just play a straight up mutate deck. Like those decks are really fun and they're really good. And remember the cool games we had? where he, like, went off with Scoot Swarms and Great Horns and happened to draw one of our two Sterixes, that's what the Mutate decks can do consistently. If you want to throw in some four fun cards like Morag, sure, go for it, that's fine. But I feel like the deck is just way too scattered, way too unfocused, way too lacking in dual lands, way too lacking in reasonable sideboard options. Like, when you exclude Zagoth Mamba, which we learned just isn't very good, when you exclude that as a sideboard option, then we're down to six cards. And they're not a bad six cards, but still, that means there's nine more slots that could be filled with stuff that would be relevant in different matchups. So, the most ambitious Dirgebat deck ever, huh. It's officially a meme. No other way to put it. And that's been our meme or dream for this week. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed us getting crushed <laughs> repeatedly. But we did win one and we did cast a dirge bat. So not all is lost. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.